Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be working on my little floral piece for spring. So I started fussy cutting out my little bird because I sort of feel like he needs to find his home first before I can start building in backgrounds and textures and bits and pieces. I think we need to find a home for this little guy. So I thought I'll just start fussy cutting him out and then we can have a bit of a fiddle with where he'll actually sit. It might be a case that this whole piece is a little bit too big and we need to break it down to, in order to make it fit properly. So we're going to just collage some of the elements into position. So I've also got sitting here with me the some soft fabrics so these are sort of like something from the wedding industry really lingerie industry soft rayons and silks and taffetas and i sort of like a little pile of those types of textures so we'll call them the soft fabrics see-throughy things nets and curtaining you know all of those types then I want to drift through all of these projects, a bit of uniformity with my background fabrics. So I've been hoarding a collection of linens. Now they all came from the same place. There was a company in Sydney that was making linen bed linen for everyone. And if you couldn't decide what linen bed sheets you would like, you could order a sample kit. And I saw this spot up, a shop up, no, sorry, <laughs> spit it out. I saw this shop pop up. I think it was on Instagram. It was years ago. Um, I don't think they exist anymore. I'll have a little look, but if they're not in the description below, they're no longer. So I thought, wow, what a fantastic way of getting a lovely range of linen. And I just love the tones. So I thought I'm going to dig that box out and I'm going to nibble some little pieces out of there to add to my um, work. It's just got that really soft feel about it. Now, in addition to that, I do have some little flowers here that I could fussy cut out as well. Whether I'll need them today just a few little pieces that might might inspire me. I just don't know. Not sure where it'll go, this piece. I'm not sure really of anything. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to go with the flow and see what comes. If I like it, it's in. If I don't, next. <laughs> I'm trying not to overthink it. I've had this piece sitting where I film for about two days, just looking at it, walking past it. What could I do? What stages do I do it in? And I think it's a little bit of everything, to be honest, to just do all the backgrounds. What if they're in the wrong spot? To just do feature pieces. Well, we need your backgrounds. So I think it's going to be just... Pick a spot, go for it. I'm trying not to think too much about the whole piece. I'm just going to think about a section. And I think once I get that rhythm happening there, I will then be able to move on confidently having sorted my style. I hope that makes sense. But is there a style? I don't know. Don't know. You'll see I'm fussy cutting out this little bird, but I'm leaving a little bit of blue. Now you'll probably be thinking, well, why does the girl want blue when everything is pink? Well, I need something to stitch him down. I need to be able to put my needle and thread into the blue and whiz around the whole piece to anchor him down. And then I will be coming back with stitches to fill in the blue so it's not seen because I'll be stitching everything you see 
if you don't want to do that level of stitching, well, then you might want to fussy cut out your bird right back to the actual image itself, like eliminate, eliminate the blue altogether. It's up to you. If you want to do lots and lots of stitching, which I'm hoping to do, I hope I don't regret the decision, <laughs> but I'm hoping to get in there and fill it full of some form of background fabric and thread. Just do I need to take that out? Probably not. It's probably been a bit too fussy. All right, let's get rid of my, my crumbs. Oh, I just love the fabric. I hope I do it justice. I love it as it is, let alone me coming along and just, you know, filling it full of goodness knows what. All right, little bird, time to find your home. So looking at my space... We could either nestle him in here, but I think he's going to intrude too much on my flowers. I think he needs to be over here. He could be at the very bottom, like a tree that's below, coming up. Don't mind that. Let's just have a have a play. So it could be down there. Or what are the negatives to him being there? I can take those little berries off so I get my petal back if I choose to. So sometimes a little thing like that over the top tells you that that flower is definitely behind. This could be a tree that's growing down here in amongst. Don't mind that. I do lose a bit of that yellow. I do lose those two. But I have an awful lot of leaves up there, so it's not a big thing. So let's just drag him up a little bit higher and put him into that space. I gain back more yellow. He feels like he's more part of the image. I would take that little stem off there so it would look like the stick came from behind. I'd probably chop that little berry off there so that would end. I could chop that little berry off there. I get all my leaves. I can play with this yellow here if I choose to or eliminate it completely and just have a little bit coming out there. I think I like him there. I think he sort of feels like he's more part of the image and that way if I want to do something down here like the, the palm or, the, or just some lace and fabrics, I think that's where he's going to go. Yeah, yep, that's where he's going to go. Okay, decision made. Now let's have a look at little B. Oh, bandit. Can you hear that? Oh, drives my husband nuts. He's like, we have to, hello, bandit. We have to stop it. How do you stop it? The boy is singing. He is um, having a howl. I um, spoke to the breeder and... He said that he has a couple that do that. And then I started doing a little bit more research and there's like huskies and oh, all sorts, all sorts of dogs out there that um, howl. <clears throat> so it would seem we have a howling hound. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
It's driving my husband nuts, but I like it. I think it's interesting. Someone even suggested, was it full moon? And it was at the time when he first started. It was, but it sort of wasn't, but we've just been joking about it. So what you can do next is you can pin it, you could tack it, you can uh, use some of the quilter's glues. Now, I do have a quilter's glue. That's the little glue sticks that go into these pens. And here's a pen. I don't mind them, but I'm not a fan because, not because they don't glue, they do. But I find that when I fussy cut these things out and I start stroking the edge of all of the fabric, it starts to fray it. And that's purely the action of applying it. So there's nothing wrong with the glue. It's just really, for me, I'm not a fan because it is um, sort of breaking down the actual... Um, what am I trying to say? It's breaking down the, the fibres on the edge of the fabric. So I'm just going to trim back this branch. I don't think I'll regret that. I've left it over my petal a little bit because the petal can stitch, um, you know, around it. Now I'm going to use art glitter glue. A, it glues quickly. B, it's easy to apply and I'm not damaging the edge of my fussy cut image out anymore. So it would seem that my videos now are going to feature a howling hound. <laughs> Mr. Bandit of a morning now likes to chat to the neighbours via a howl. Gosh, I tell you, it's just a circus, isn't it? When you have animals, the funniest things happen. So I've just secured this side. I'm just going to give it a minute to grip because uh, glitter glue is very quick. Before I get too far ahead of myself there and he's, he's stuck, I want to have a think about are there any textural fabrics that I want in under everything. There I'm not too worried. I feel like I could stitch and carry on, but I think I need something through here. So let's have a little look at some of these linens. See, that's a good match. Even though it's very similar in color, it's about just having an interesting piece of texture there. So like, So I might just do a little bit of layering. Do I want to make it messy? How messy can I get the linen? Reasonably messy. Does it really matter? Probably not because it'll be full of stitches, but I guess at least I've got rid of a straight edge while I have an opportunity to. gets rid of that little dot there. Might just hang everything over the edge a little bit. What other fabrics do we have? I do love that. That certainly suits, doesn't it? I'll have a look for the website and see if I can find this just in case you know you're thinking it might be something you'd like to add to your this is just all about adding a little bit of interest and if you don't like it let's say you get to a point where you're like you're just not a lover of it can I work a little bit of this purpley colour in? You can just unpick it. It does not matter. And like I said, I'm just going to focus in a corner and work my way up. 
And that way I'll find, I think, my groove. And if I like the style of which we're heading down, let's get some of these softs in. There's some bits here. I like these little fabrics that have little embroidered bits on them. I just think they're just lovely. They just add little bits of interest. Yeah, I like that. Now we really should consider <clears throat> putting some of these textures a little bit further up and around our little bird I think just give it a little fray I'll just stay back from that leaf a little bit Maybe, so at the moment I'm really just working through three colours here, a neutral, a pink that's very similar to the background, so it really does blend, and then a little bit of that lilac-y colour. I'm sort of thinking if I do have this lilac-y colour, this here, it might give me an opportunity to have more thread colours to pick from. down the track when it's you know I'm looking for some you know, inspiration of color I like that so we've just got something a bit chunky sitting behind the little bird yeah I like that okay <clears throat> I'm confident now I can Continue to lay down the rest of our little bird. So I might start down here on this bottom edge and get that attached. Now you don't have to use a tacking down glue process. Like most of the time, pins and invisible stitch and I'm done. But when things are really fiddly like this, and can wriggle a little bit. I do go down this option because it's sort of quickly getting it into position without it fiddling and you've sort of been stitching for 20 minutes and then you realise that everything's a bit skew whiff. That's why I like it. So we can cut that off there. I just put a little bit of glue on that and I didn't need it. So I'll just hang on to that little piece because we may need it. Now I might just put a little bit of glue there purely is something to hold that just a tiny little bit probably won't hold it being that it's such a coarse coarse fabric I won't go near the soft ones because they will uh, they'll break down or not break down the glue will you know pop through So the next stage will be to stitch little birdie into position with a overcast stitch right around his edge. Then I know he's definitely held.
need to have a good think about little B that I've got there as well and where he goes. Yeah, that's good. List now. I, I don't have pins in my way because you imagine pinning all that, that detail. And I can comfortably go and hop in the car or um, go and sit on the couch and I can do some stitching. We've got some interesting background elements going on. Here we go, little bird. Don't get enough glue there. That's it. Now, these berries. I might take them back as far as there, to be honest. I don't think I need to go right to that very edge. There we go. That's worked a treat. Need an iron. It's a little bit crease there. Just going to iron that out when I get off the camera. Now this little guy's, I got two. This one and this one. We have an opportunity of bringing berries elsewhere. So it looks like this tree is actually bigger than it actually is. So we could have some berries coming down like so. Don't mind that idea. And maybe this bigger one comes out of there. Mm, don't like that one. Actually like the little one there. Maybe there. They look a little bit too uniformed. Maybe that needs to go like that. No. I like that there. It's just a little, maybe I make it a bigger branch as in we connect them. That's what we might do. No, we're not. <laughs> what about some berries coming behind the bird? I think he's probably got enough, but you know what? I do like that. Even coming up there a little bit. Let's think a little randomly. It doesn't have to look like it's in line with the plant. It can just appear. Like so. So if I build that out as an actual blossomy yellow something, I like how there's a pop of yellow in it, then have some berries poking out from it. I don't mind that. I definitely like that. But before I put him down, do I want some texture in there? I think I do. Let's get a few little bits in there, hey?
So you'll see I'm covering, I'm covering those key features like the leaf, the leaf, the petal and the um, branch because I want this to be behind it all. So when I stitch this, it'll come up and over this and this then will look like it's sort of part of the background. Don't think I want brown in there. We might just put a little piece of the lavender. Now we need to rough it up a little bit just in case some of it is those edges are showing. Where's my purple? A little bit more pink. And these little pieces I'll just invisible stitch in. And that way, if I need to remove them or adjust them or trim them, there'll just be a couple little stitches in there holding them down. I do want my piece to have a, a, a what's a, what's the word for it? A bit of a, a messy, thick, textured feel. And then these flowers sort of come out on top of it. Does that make sense? So I might actually, I think I'm going to trim, trim a little. Just feel like I need to. Expose those branches a little on this edge here. It really is just experimenting. I'm getting some. bits and pieces built into it. Hello Fudge, you've come to visit. Goodness sakes Fudgy, don't you start howling. Okay, so I like that, that edge there. I am trimming it back it would seem. I know I said I wasn't going to but I feel like I just want to see what it looks like patched in there. Yeah, I like that. All right, now a little piece of this. Do I put it under? No, I'm going to put it. This little piece, I think. Or I might just tuck that there. I like that. It's so random. Isn't it just liberating? There's pen written, drawn on that from, you know, those heat soluble pens. So I've got a bit of a textury thing happening there. Uh, a bit of texture down the bottom here. Oh, fudgy. Birds attached. Yeah, I'm liking that. So I didn't put my glue cap back in. Art glitter glue, that's not a good thing. 
So before I get too far ahead of myself, which I'm going to add one more piece and then that's it. Just going to build that into there. Um, I just want to show you how I'm going to attach my bird. So if you are new to this whole collaging of fabrics, I just want to show you what you do with your feature piece. Then we need to have a good look at our B. So I'm just going to get some normal sewing machine cotton. Nothing fancy. And I'm going to start overcast stitching. I always work towards myself. I'm going to just remove him. And even then I've, have I lost the little bit that was going to go? Yeah, there it is. But I was going to have that somewhere there. Don't know, might not need it. I'm just going to pin them, change my mind. I'm going to pin them up here. So if I want them, they're there. Okay, so I always tend to work towards myself. So I'll find, and I start in the middle of my piece. So I'm going to do this little bit in the centre here. So I'm going to come up at the furthest point away from me. And then I'm just going to do a simple overcast stitch like so that just secures that little piece of fabric to the background now you can do the stabbing way where you go through pull it out come back up but i do a lot of sewing so wherever i can i try and do it in one movement so that means going in and coming up where I need to come out again in one movement that's just less movement on my my wrist and my shoulder and elbows and all of that stuff so I'm just working my way, way around Now, if there's little fibers sticking up, you can come back through and just trim them off. They don't worry me too much because there'll probably be something go there. Whether it might be a continuation of that yellow flower or, or not, who knows. the neighborhood dogs woofing and now my two must be something going on out the front here they come passing through gee they're rude they're trying to stitch in quiet and a relaxed state and they're having a whoopee of a time If you find your little stitches go up onto your bird, that's fine, because we'll be stitching him as well. Oi, come on. Goodness sakes. And they look at you as if they've done nothing wrong. It's like, guys. So that now is not only tacked down with that little bit of glue, it's stitched as well. So now I'm going to jump over to here. So that little birdie's not going anywhere. It is probably overkill. If this is something you don't want to do, that's fine. Just do some little invisible stitches. It's probably way more than I need to do, but this is certainly not coming apart in a hurry. The next thing I'll be on the hunt for is having a look through my threads. I won't do it in this video because I want to get this all stitched down. Is I'll be looking through all my threads to see if I can find some yellow tones, um, some pinks that suit the overall piece, and just sort of creating a little collection of threads that I can have with the project. 
Now remembering we've got three months to complete this. If I go at the rate I usually stitch, I'll have this done in two weeks, but I wanna just take my time and enjoy it. So I'll be putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. It's, it's not one of those pieces that's going to be looming over my head because I wanna get it done in a, you know, in a timely three week fashion. It's just gonna be pick it up, do a little bit more stitching. I just wanna, I don't know. I feel like all my pieces, I'm, I find the idea and then away I go and it's done and I don't know. I just sort of feel like sometimes I'm missing the whole reason of slow stitch. So that's why I thought with this project, I'm going to make it three months and take my time. So if I do have a crazy idea and instead of going, no, I won't do that because that's probably an additional eight hours of stitching, I'm going to do it because I think it will be worth it in the end. And if this piece is going to be hanging on my wall to signal the start of spring, I want to be able to look at it and going, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. I want as many little details in there as I can to make it interesting. Does that make sense? It's your piece. It's up to you. You might say that is enough effort and energy invested into my panel and you're done. Gosh, imagine a wall hanging that we get finished, but then when spring comes around again next year, you add some more stitches. Gosh, could you imagine what it would look like after a while? Layers upon layers of beautiful little morsels. I just had a vision of this four panels framed just in a big block. How beautiful would that be? You never know. It might go onto a rolling pin and one day it might end up in a frame. Who knows? Okay, that's, yeah, that is where I started. So that's those little tiny internal holes secured. So let's now have a little look at the B. I do like him. He is big, but that doesn't matter, does it? Would it be better in another season? But spring, bees are out in spring. Let's fussy cut him out. And I guess have a look at him. And if, if he's not suitable, well, that's fine. We can... I won't get too close to his little legs there because I can always stitch in there. And it'll keep him nice and flat on my fabric because he's so delicate. Look at his little stinger. Look at that nasty little stinger he has. This flower here, to me, is a bit of a lost flower. 
So he'll need a lot of embroidery to bring him back out. So there's an opportunity there to work in the B. I've lost a stem there. Didn't notice that before. Is that okay? Am I happy with that? No, I'm not. I'm going to just remodel a little, guys. gone quiet. <laughs> Do I put it on this side? Yeah, I like it over there. Well, there was a change. Where was the other piece? Oh, there was a change. Like, look at that. I just completely changed my whole so that's what this piece will be like, I think. We will pin something down and then we'll look at it and go, no, I don't like that effect. I like that. That just got a little bit of texture there and then maybe some stitches in there or I go a softer fabric. Who knows? Might just split that. I'm going to lay that over that. Bandit's sitting at the window here with his back to me just as if nothing, nothing's going on. I haven't been woofing like a lunatic down the side of the house. I'll tell you what, you can easily justify his behaviour it would seem. There we go, I like that. Just a little something. You know what I'm thinking down here? This is too uniformed. This is really random. And this is very uniformed. I feel like this needs to be potentially changed a little bit. I don't know. Maybe if I take away that square edge there. That's better. Yeah, that's, that looks better. Like, it felt very blocky. Even this little grey piece does I still feel a little bit blocky. I think I'm going to leave leave it at that. Now, little B. Maybe we work him in up there. That would give... See, that's a really big petal. And quite... Well, it's not boring, but that stitch would look like a big blob, I think. There's going to be enough big blobs in the pile of colours. I'm thinking we bring him in up here and I can still stitch the petal. I can do something up here. Let's just pin him there. I'm, I'm not going to glue him down. I'm just going to think about him. We're going to just look at him for a while. He might stay there a month. He might stay there 24 hours. I just feel like I just want to look at him. I do like him. Nothing has to be in proportion. But that is one big scary bee. For a little bird, you'd have to be scared of him. So now, what have we got? About 15 minutes left. I'm just going to thread my needle and go back to running a little stitch. 
actually no what I will show you next is I really like this in here this cluster so what I'm going to do is invisible stitch through there I'll leave the edges flapping in the breeze so to speak because I might want to trim them back I might want to um, stitch over the top of them like that petal come over the top I might want it like I said flapping in the breeze that's a bit too close to the edge of that guy just in case I want to trim it I'll just come back here I think I will trim it just a little bit Just do a little jump around the place and get some of these little pieces. The other thing I probably need to think about too um, is some extra flowers here and there just to really start making the piece interesting. I've got so many ideas going through my brain. But steady girl. It's all about enjoying the process, isn't it? This is the project that helps us enjoy the process. When I'm making squishy bags and, you know, little one-page pieces, it's sort of all, I don't know, a little bit quick. A little bit quick for me. And I do not want to lose my passion for stitching. So that's what this project's all about. Allowing me just to meander around a piece. If you've got a little gap there, that'd be great to tuck a little piece of lace in through there. Just a little, little bit. Okay, so that little cluster of fabric is now secure. I can get rid of those pins and look at it for a bit. And like I said, that is easy enough to remove if I decide that that's not what I want. So I might just now stitch up this side towards the B. Oh, it's doggy wash day today. Those pair are getting a bath. Giving the dog wash lady coming at midday. They're having a swim. Pepper loves it. Pepper's such a beauty queen. She gets in there and she, oh, just loves the blow dry. She'll lie on the bottom of the hydro bath on her back with her legs in the air getting a blow dry. Such a dramatic <laughs> bandit on the other hand. He hates it. He hates it. He's climbing out. He's wriggling. He's not impressed. He, there's a tiny little window above the hydro bath in the back of the little trailer. He is literally heading to that window. He's got his snout hanging out, <laughs> sniffing freedom. Oh my goodness, I have to leave because he just gets so, so wound up that I've just got to get away because, yeah, he, he's just naughty. I feel like I need... A little something in there. Should I put in that neutral? 
let's try I just looked back at the piece on the camera like my my camera my uh, iPad projects to um, the TV that's in my room and I just felt like it needed a little something. I can get his tail up a little bit there. trying to do I don't know I might leave that go up under that breath yeah I think now I haven't roughed it up have I slow down rough it up whether that's really going to play a part in the end when it's all embroidered who knows but at least if I have it there to start with it's so there is a flower underneath there so I don't want to lose that I think I'll just leave it at that I might get those cherries a bit of space or berries or cherries I was thinking about those little red guys and right through the whole piece I felt like they needed to be a pink or like a sequined or something. But you know, those red little berries are really growing on me. Like I think the red and the pink will work together is what I'm, I'm thinking. I still feel this is a bit uniformed down here it's not messy enough I've got this messy thing happening see how your styles evolve it would have been too hard to get uniform through here so the messy patching has worked but down in that bottom corner being it's a corner I've staged it a little more uniformed and I think I need to revisit that when I stitch it down So this little guy's now in there. I like that. That's just brought that little bit of brown into there. It'll break up, break it up a little bit, I think. And that's down. Oop. Okay, another little morsel in amongst it. Got a real swish happening here, which is so me. I like to start in a corner and work towards it. Um, let's mess this up a little bit more. I've got a little bit of glue there, don't I? So that means I need probably another piece of fabric get some of this pink linen I think that's better that's better now it looks like a cluster and not such a square posed piece I can still see my little flower so let's put a pin there and then I'll get my needle and thread and we'll put a few little stitches in there so my homework will be to finish overcast stitching around my little bird find some threads 
to suit the project. So like before, I'm just going to do a few little stitches through this cluster. I'm going to leave all of those edges flapping in the breeze so that if I want to tuck in something extra, I love this little piece of, see this last little flower. Gosh, it's going to have to stay with this piece. I might need it somewhere. There we go. Just a few little stitches. Just to pin it all down. Oh, it feels so yummy under the fingers. It's just, you can feel the texture building already. to think about my little words too that's another feature that needs to be I didn't even knot that good one I just cut it goodness me I started thinking about something else I completely forgot what I was doing and chopped it I might just get myself a little not happening here there we go problem fixed all right so that's all my pins removed so that's great and bumblebee is still thinking about what he's doing up there but that's fine now i might just put look at that This is where you start finding your fussy cut flowers and working them into your piece. And this piece has an embroidered flower already on it. Look at him. Where can we work him in? Do we give up on that flower up there? I like that there. Is that the right way around? Yeah, I like that there. And then the bee comes in across the top. Something to think about. I do like that. I feel like that feels a little bit more natural. Does that make sense? Hmm. I don't think I've got any more of that fabric. I need to go for a little look. Maybe there are some more flowers on there that I've forgotten about. Just grabbing a little full clip. Keep my fabrics together. And that one. I could put some of that up there too, underneath. Hmm, something to think about. I think these guys can go back into the pot and if we need them, they're right on top there. I still have 
these to consider as little add-ins. See that little piece there? Let's just cut that out. Just a rough cut. I know I don't want a blue flower, so I'm pretty confident I can This is where it gets interesting when you start adding some other little, little bits. Maybe that top corner. Look, we've already hit the hour. Gosh, I need more time. I haven't finished. We've got a little cluster there. Maybe, maybe Oh yeah, now I like that. Well, I do at the moment. <laughs> Let's just pin it. I definitely like that. I still can't decide about that bee. He may be or he may be gone. We will see. I do like that, but I like that and I like that. It's sort of creating a little bit of interest, little pockets of you know, that's when you start looking at some of these leaves and you go, well, do I have enough leaves and do I start building in some additional flowers, you know, in around the place? But <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, look, I'm past the hour and I'm off on another tangent. See, even that there's interesting. And I guess, too, if they're not exactly the right size, we can sketch in... See, I like that, that little piece there. We could sketch in some little flowers and then stitch them to, you know, fill in little spots. Okay. Oh, see, I haven't even looked at this yet. Remember I was thinking of even adding this ribbon. The words, that was another thing I was going to have a think about. And I had thought when I said the sentence, I don't know what I was doing at the time, is creating a piece get rid of the berries creating an inserted little piece at the top there and stitching on on that like a little rectangle let's just cut the rectangle We could probably merge flowers around it to soften the edge of the rectangle. Just folding up the linen, guys. Oh, gosh, I've made a mess. Anyway, so let's just rough cut it. Fray it up. Maybe the bee comes over to this as part of the you know as part of the if I get that up a little bit as part of the words come over here little guy Let's just put in there. <laughs> this little bee is just going to travel around the piece and just cruise. <laughs> so at the moment, at the moment, my words will go up there. But we will see. We will see. It's not a decision for today. It's a decision for whenever. And I don't even have words. Oh, Nella, Nelly lost my berries. Let's pin those berries up there as well. 
It's my maybe corner. It may be something and it may not be. Okay. Gosh, that linen just makes a mess, doesn't it? I think that is it. A bit of branch. We don't need that. I think... I think that's it. My next thing will to be to go hunting for threads and colours that suit my piece and ribbons and etc. etc. So I will say goodbye and finish stitching little bird on. Then I know that's done and start looking for threads. Okay, everyone, I will um, see you all again soon in the next video. We'll say goodbye for now. Bye.